Hello and welcome to Bay College's College Algebra Online Lectures. This is section 1.4. We're going to be dealing with radical equations, uh, equations quadratic in form, and factorable equations that we can solve using the method of factoring and our other forms of uh, solving quadratic equations. The first thing we're going to look at is this radical equation. In order to solve a radical equations, we've got to eliminate the radical. And we can do that by identifying the index. In this case, it's a square root, so our index is 2. So to get rid of a square root, we can square it. But what we do to one side, we do to the other, our property of equality. And when I do that, I get x equals 4 squared, which is 16. Now what we have to realize when we do this is we don't actually have the same equation or an equivalent equation. This is a new equation that contains the solution of the previous equation, but it almost, or sometimes, does have what's called extraneous solutions, extra solutions that may not be uh, possible in the previous equation. So one thing we should always do is check our work. So I'm going to plug 16 into here. The square root of 16 is, in fact, 4. So it checks out. I check my work. This is the solution to that equation. Now, essentially, the property we're using to eliminate the radical is if one quantity equals another quantity, we can raise them to the same power n, as long as n isn't 1, because if n is 1, we haven't really changed the equation. It would still be the same equation. This is a new equation that contains the solutions of the previous equation, but it may or may not have extraneous solutions. So we always have to check our work. Let's, let's see how that may apply here. If we look at this example, this is just a statement. This quantity equals 5, x equals 5. If I square both sides, this here is a new equation that contains this as a solution. Now, if I were to solve this equation, I need to use a square root, undo this. I essentially, I'm raising it to the 1 half power. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get x plus or minus the square root of 25. When I introduce a square root into an equation, I have to remember there are two possibilities. So here, x equals plus or minus 5. Now we notice this statement here does contain the original solution to this, but it also has an extraneous solution, because negative 5 is not equal to 5. So we must always check our work. Now we're going to go over to this here, and we're going to look, how do we use this property in solving equations containing radicals? Well, the first thing we have to do is isolate the radical. And then we raise each side to the index to the, make the power the same as the index. And the reason why I have repeat here is if we've done that, we can re-isolate any other radicals that remain and do the same thing again. And we'll see an example of that. Uh, once we've eliminated the radicals, we can then solve it. Any solutions we get, we must check, because when we raise it to some power, we end up with uh, something that may have extraneous solutions, but it will contain the solutions we're looking for if they exist. So let's look at an example. Step one that we just explained says we have to isolate the radical first. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I have the square root of 2x minus 3 equals 3 just by adding 2 to both sides. Now I recognize the index to be 2, so I'm going to square both sides. And when I do that, I get rid of that radical, but I have to square this. 3 squared is 9. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I can simply just start solving. Add 3 to both sides. Divide by 2. And I have x equals 6. Now I could accept that as my answer, but I want to be sure that it holds true in the original equation. 2 times 6 is 12. Minus 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 2 is, in fact, 1. So it does work. Sometimes checking it might be a little bit more complicated than this. You might have to work it out on paper. But uh, definitely check your answers. Now, if we look at this one, we need to isolate this radical. That's our first step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this quantity to both sides. But at the same time, I'm going to subtract 4, because I like to have my signs positive. So I subtract 4 from both sides, and I add the square root of 2x. So I am skipping a step here. If, if you don't see it, try it yourself. Pause the video. Do what you have to do. But I've 
isolated the radical, and now I'm going to square it. If I square both sides, pay close attention to this. This is a binomial. We don't just have x squared plus 16 because this is a binomial. We actually have to use FOIL here. Don't forget to use FOIL. So when I FOIL this out, I'm going to get this when I combine like terms for my middle term. Square this, that radical goes away. And now I have a quadratic that I can solve using quadratic methods. I'm going to set it equal to 0, x squared minus 10x plus 16 equals 0. And this factors relatively nicely to x minus 8, x minus 2. They sum to negative 10, but negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. And the solutions I find, I'll write them right here, x equals 8 and 2. Now it's imperative that I check them. If I go back to the original equ equation, 8 minus the square root of 2 times 8 is 16 equals 4. Well, 8 minus the square root of 16, well, the square root of 16 is 4. 8 minus 4 is, in fact, 4. So this value checks out. 8 works. So I'm going to put a little check below it. What if I try 2? If I try 2, I'll write it right here. 2 minus the square root of 2 times 2 equals 4. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of that is 2. Or maybe we just recognize and say, hey, we're squaring something under the square root. It's equal to 2. 2 minus 2 is not equal to 4. So we've just identified one of our extraneous solutions. This does not work. So we take the 2 out of our possible solutions. And the only solution to this is x equals 8. All right, let's do another example. And hopefully, we'll recognize what's going to happen here. We're going to use these rules. We're going to isolate the radicals. So I'm just going to subtract 2 from both sides. And hopefully, we're intuitive enough to say, you know what, we're already done with the problem. Because the square root is never going to give you a negative as a result. Square roots are always positive, right? We can't take the square root of a negative. That's in the imaginary or complex number system. So we could stop here and say no solution or no real solution. All right, so <coughs> identify that. If you don't, you end up squaring both sides. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. Oh, excuse me. My cameraman just uh, notified me that I made a transcription error. And we do that all the time when we're doing the homework. We're looking at problem 17, but we're writing down half of 19. It happens. Now if I add 8 to both sides, let's just get this out of the way for a second. We know that's the answer. I get x equals 12. Well, let's plug that in and see if it works. That's why it's important to check your answer. If you miss this here, check your work when you get down here. 12 minus 8 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is not equal to 0. So this cannot be the solution. Well, if this is the only quantity I found, it's extraneous. There are no other quantities. It must be no real solution. All right, this one's a little, uh, a little daunting at times for students. We see this, and there's more than one radical. Well, let's kind of move back here and refer to our solving radical equations notes here. We isolate the radical raise each side to the index, repeat. Well, our goal on this problem that we're about to do is to isolate one radical at a time and raise it to the power we need. If a radical still remains, we're going to repeat this process until we can solve it. So we're going to go here. What I'm going to do to this problem here is I'm going to add this to that side. I want to isolate this radical. And by moving that to that side, I end up with something positive. Now I've isolated this radical, so now I can square it. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. Now, this needs to be foiled, just like the one of the previous examples we did. Treat it as a binomial and just use foil. On this side, I get x plus 7. The square cancels the square root. And here, if I foil it out, I get 4 plus 2 times this quantity and this quantity times 2 are inner and outer terms of foil to give me 4 square root of x minus 1. And then the last term times itself is this squared, which gets rid of that square root. Now if we notice, we did the FOIL, we still have a radical. Well, that's where we need to repeat the process. I'm going to take this 
and I'm going to isolate this radical. So uh, let's see. I'm going to subtract an x from both sides. Well, that's kind of helpful. That x kind of eliminated itself. I'm going to add 4 minus 1, which is 3. Subtract 3 from both sides. I get 4 equals 4 square root of x minus 1. Now here, I recognize, hey, I can divide both sides by 4 to simplify this to get that out of there. But maybe they're not evenly divisible. I can square it at this point as long as I square this times the square of that. But I'm going to divide by 4 instead. 1 equals the square root of x minus 1. And now I can square both sides. I'm just going to take it up over here because I'm, I need the board over there. 1 squared is 1 equals the square root of x minus 1 squared is x minus 1. And now I can add 1 to both sides. 2 equals x, so x equals 2. I'm going to check that solution. 2 plus 7 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Minus. 2 minus 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. That's a true statement. So I know my solution is the correct one. All right. Now we're going to move to this example here. And if you notice, it says the 1 3rd power. Hopefully, we recall that uh, fractional exponents are the same thing as radicals. This is just saying the cubed root of this value. So we've identified the index. Now, in order to get rid of that, I'm going to use a power. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm going to raise each side to the third power. 1 third times 3, using our power rule, gives this an exponent of 1. Well, it's just like before, it canceled the square root. Well, here we're canceling a cubed root. A fractional exponent is the same thing as a root. And negative 1 cubed is negative 1. An odd number of negatives, still negative, and 1 to any power is 1. Now I can continue to solve. Subtract 1 from both sides. Divide by 2. x equals negative 1. Be sure to check your work. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Plus 1 is negative 1. The cubed root of negative 1 is negative 1. So that's a true statement. I know it works. So now this here, <coughs> this is going to be your quiz. This is something you can work out yourself and see how you do. All right, and notice the index. Identify that index. Isolate that radical. Do what you need to do following those rules. Good luck. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is solving equations that are quadratic in form. Well, the first thing we want to do there is set them equal to 0, and then identify, make sure they're quadratic in form. And I'll explain how to do that in a moment. Then we're going to do what's called the substitution. We're going to let the value u equal the squared term. And uh, then we're going to solve it as if it was a quadratic. When we do that substitution, we get something that is a quadratic. Now, I starred this one because this is the one students generally forget to do. They end up with some solutions, but they actually only found u, not the x value. So take your u value, take that value and set it equal to the term you substituted. You're basically coming back to this point and putting in that value for u. Don't forget to do that. Once you find the x values from the u, check your solutions. So let's look at this example here. The first thing I want to do is set it equal to 0. So I get x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 3 equals 0. I just subtract 4x squared from both sides, put it in descending order. Now, to determine if something is quadratic in form, all we have to do is look at these two terms. Is this term squared relative to that term? If I square x squared, do I get x to the fourth? Yes. That means that this is quadratic in form. I can do something with this. So I'm going to do a substitution. I'm going to let u equal the squared term. So if I put that in, u squared is this term. If I square this term, I get that. So if I square this term, that's my leading term. u squared minus 4u, just substituting that value in, plus 3 equals 0. And now we can solve it using quadratic methods. While looking at this, I say, you know, this one factors. So factoring is my go-to uh, choice if it's factorable. We have u minus 3, u minus 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3. Negative 3u and negative 1u is negative 4u. 
And so u equals 3 using the zero value theorem and 1. These are the solutions of u, not of x. So I have to remember to come back and plug it in. 3 equals x squared, or 1 equals x squared, and we have to solve those. Now, just like we removed a radical by uh, squaring it or cubing it, whatever the index is, I can take the root using this index. So I'm just going to take the square root of both sides, and I have to remember plus or minus when I introduce a square root. Same thing here, plus or minus the square root of 1. And this can simplify a little further. The square root of 1 is just 1. So I have these two solutions, and I have these two solutions. And just for time's sake, I'm just going to do one, because the others are conjugates. So they will work, and we had discussed that in the previous lecture video. I'm going to go back to the original equation and put in uh, the square root of 3. The square root of 3 to the fourth power is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. The square root of 3 squared is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 equals 12. So these solutions will work. And then I'm going to test this set of solutions. If I put 1 in here, 1 to the fourth is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. If I put 1 in here, 1 squared is still 1 times 4 is 4. 4 equals 4. These are also true in that equation. So we didn't have any extraneous solutions. And because this was a fourth degree polynomial, we can find at, at most four solutions, which we did find. Now let's look at this example here. If I'm looking at this, is this quadratic in form? Well, this isn't to the fourth power, and that isn't squared. But that's why I use that term relative. Is this term squared relative to this one? What would happen if I squared this middle term? Well, using the power rule, 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. So this is a candidate for using substitution. So let me just remove that. If you need to see it again, you can always move the cursor back and watch it. So I'm going to let u equal this middle term, x to the 1 third which means the first term, u squared, would be this squared. And we just saw that that is, in fact, the case if I square it. And now we have a quadratic that we can solve using quadratic methods. And this does factor to u minus 4, u plus 2. And we get u equals 4 and negative 2. And now we're going to check our work. If I put this into here, 4 squared is 16. All right, so we end up with the cubed root of 16, which we could simplify. Oh, did I make an error? Oh, hey, thank you. My, uh, my camera operator just informed me that I did the same mistake that students frequently do. I took this value, and I was ready to run with it. I did not go back into my substitution. Thank you. So if u is 4, i got to plug it into here. That equals x to the 1 third. Well, to get rid of this 1 third, now we can cube it. 4 cubed is 64. So x equals 64. We also have the solution negative 2. And we can cube both sides here. And we get negative 8 equals x. So these are the two solutions i got to plug in there and check. And had I w went to check this, I would have found, hey, it doesn't work. Something went awry. Well, it's because I didn't go back to my u. All right, so now I'm going to take this 64 and I'm going to plug it in. The cubed root, because that's my index of 64, is 4. 4 squared is 16. The cubed root of 64 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is, am I, yeah is negative 8 minus 8 equals 0. Is that a true statement? It sure is. 16 minus 8 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. So this is a solution. Now I'm going to try negative 8. The cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. The cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Minus 8 equals 0. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. So it also holds true. So this 
is another solution. Both of them checked out. All right, we're going to do a little review of factoring. Hopefully, at this point in algebra, your factoring skills are very strong. Uh, they need to be to be successful and make this course as uh, smooth as possible. But when it comes to factoring quadratics or things that are quadratic in form, we always want to set them equal to zero and then factor. And some of the uh, things you might want to review to build up your skills is the greatest common factor. If they have a common factor, you're going to take that out first. Uh, then you're going to, maybe you might identify some special products. And one method that's often forgotten is the AC method factor by grouping. Uh, in one of the examples, I'm actually going to review that. Once you've, you're able to factor it, you use the zero factor theorem. Basically, what makes that factor zero is going to be one of your solutions or uh, possibilities. And then, of course, you always want to check your work. So we're going to move over here to the whiteboard. And we're going to see how these rules apply. Well, the first thing I want to do is set this equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 4x cubed from both sides. And then I'm going to see uh, x's in both terms so I can factor out the greatest common factor, which is going to be x cubed. which leaves me this factor times x cubed. And now I recognize this as one of our special products. This is the difference of squares. So what I can do is I can factor it further, x minus 2, x plus 2. And now I'm ready to use the zero factor theorem. What factor of x cubed would be 0? Well, if x is 0, 0 to any power is still 0. So x can equal 0. 0 times anything is 0. The next one, what factor would make this, or what value of x would make this factor 0? 2 minus 2 would be 0. So 0 times anything. And in this factor here, if x is negative 2, this factor would be 0. So we have 0, 2, and negative 2. We could check those in here. 0 to any power is 0. 4 times 0 to any power is 0. 0 equals 0. That's a true statement. If I put in 2, 2 to the fifth is 32. 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is also 32. So that one works as well. Uh, if we put in the negative, we get negative 32. Here we'd get negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. So true statement. So all of these solutions work in the original equation. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to review that AC method factor by grouping. Now, when do we use that method is when A of our quadratic formula, AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0, when a is something other than 1. Well, here it's 4. And I notice there is no greatest common factor. I can't pull a 4 out of all of them. So I'm going to use the AC method. Well, that's essentially, it's called the AC method because I'm going to take a times c to get this. Now, this value, negative 36, I want to find the factors of negative 36 that are going to sum to that middle term. And if I break it down, well, I know 12 times 3 is 36. And because it's negative, one of these have to be negative. And it's the larger value because it has to sum to negative 9. Negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9. So now, the reason why it's called the AC method factor by grouping is because once I find these, I use them to split up the middle term. Negative 12x, positive 3x. So I haven't changed its value. This is still minus 9x. But now that it's a four-term polynomial, I can factor by grouping. Hence the name, AC, factor by grouping. So I'm going to factor out a 4x. And that'll leave me with x minus 3. Here, the common factor is 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3 and get x minus 3. And now I notice these are the same, so I can continue to factor further. x minus 3 times 4x plus 3 equals 0. Now we're ready to use the zero factor theorem. So this has been a review of the AC method. And here we get x equals 3. And to make this, negative 3 divided by 4. If you set that equal to 0 and work it out, that's what you're going to get. It's always going to be the opposite of this over that, kind of a little shortcut. And then we can plug them in and test them. And uh, these will work, all right, just for time's sake. This has been section 1.4. Thank you for watching.